All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Lauren Shea. I work for the Drupal Association. And um, today we're talking with Mike Gifford about Drupal 8 accessibility, leveraging your Drupal 8 uh, site and making it really accessible. You can uh, reach out to me at any time about our webcast series, um, our Global Training Days, which is our uh, initiative to grow Drupal adoption globally. <laughs> Uh, any Drupal camps you might be working on, and uh, this is a couple ways to contact me. Um, I'm on IRC and Drupal.org as Elche. You can obviously tweet me at Elche Drupal, and here's my email address. Again, thanks for joining us. Just a little bit of housekeeping. If you're listening from your computer, select the mic and uh, speaker audio option. And you'll be muted during the call, but there's an opportunity to ask questions and uh, talk to Mike if anything needs some clarification. Just use our Q&A window. And then additionally, we have a post webcast survey that asks a couple questions just to uh, find out that we're uh, providing the right content for our webcast series and a couple of specific questions Mike has about our uh, accessibility uh, features in Drupal. So please make sure five questions will take five minutes. And just a note, we have some upcoming Drupal cons. We have Barcelona coming up in September, DrupalCon Asia in Mumbai. Right now, we don't have a specific date, though we are holding February 2016. And DrupalCon New Orleans, uh, which should be really exciting, uh, in May of 2016. So we look forward to seeing you there. And just a quick note about our Drupal 8 Accelerate program. We are uh, raising money to accelerate the project, um, improve our uh, improve our project, and make sure that people have the right amount of funding to be in the right place at the right time to uh, work on Drupal 8. So, uh, if you haven't donated already, um, you know, take a look and see if you can uh, donate to make sure that the uh, project moves along smoothly and promptly. And without further ado, let me introduce our uh, guest speaker today, Mike Gifford. Mike is president of Open Concept Consulting. He is a Drupal 8 core accessibility maintainer, an advocate for benefit corporations, and you can contact Mike at mgifford on Twitter, and that's his website. So, Mike, I will let you take over. Thank you, Lauren. Um, so first of all, Drupal 7 was pretty good. Um, we did, it is still the, the most accessible CMS out there. Um, the WordPress folks are referring to, to Drupal's accessibility and trying to emulate that. And they're coming along pretty quickly with, with their accessibility, but they've got a long ways to, to go because of the work that's being done on Drupal 7 and getting Drupal 7's accessibility up and ready. Um, but Drupal 8 is gonna be even better than Drupal 7. There's a bunch of stuff that that is, is built into Drupal 8 that, that we couldn't get accomplished in, in, in Drupal 7 and that are, are, are just uh, really large uh, benefits for anyone who's, who's implementing a Drupal website and, and stuff that just sort of is, is, is coming out of the box. Um, we really work to try and, and make uh, Drupal be as, as accessible as, as possible by default and, and, and instead of having something that was uh, an add-on that you needed to install afterwards or, or um, work with as a as an extension of core we wanted it to be an integral part of core so that that the um, sites whether whether they were intentionally or not intentionally built to be accessible inherited the the, the best practice the best best practices of, of uh, web web accessibility so part of that comes with with uh, HTML5 and that wasn't something that was available uh, for us to work with before and it was a huge effort to go off and to convert both the front end and the back end into HTML5. I'll be going into that in a bit more detail later. Um, another one is, is uh, Way Area, which is the web accessibility initiative of the, the World Wide Web Consortiums. Um, the, their um, uh, area is the, the uh, accessible rich internet application. So that suite of, of, uh, of tools gives additional semantic information which can be useful um, largely to screen readers but not just to screen readers. So there's, a, there's an opportunity to, uh, to use this, this additional semantics to, to give context and, and, uh, and information to people who are, 
are building the the um, uh, or building websites, and, and we've, we've brought a lot of that in there. Um, Drupal's uh, is also coming with the, the latest version of jQuery UI, and when Drupal 8 comes out, that will be something that that also has a number of, of accessibility improvements in there. Um, there's a great team at at uh, the jQuery community that is looking at accessibility issues and working to improve that that library, and the Drupal community certainly being being at, working with them to try to test and evaluate the the code base for that. Um, one of the things that made Drupal 7 so good was was the the forms API, uh, and that the forms API uh, so so many of the the um, the elements for for creating and developing uh, a web form in, in Drupal is done through this centralized application programming interface that allows us to really have a lot of control about how forms are are processed. Uh, but we've we've updated that to give a lot more context and a lot more information, which which really helps with the the accessibility. Um, finally, there's there's a, a number of, of uh, CSS tools that uh, or centralized tools uh, for CSS and JavaScript that that you can um, that you can use when you're developing your modules and your themes uh, that will make it easier for you to to convey in a systematic way uh, information to to screen readers and, and to control how keyboard only users are able to to navigate your site. Um, so with that, Laura, if you could go to the next slide. So. Uh, a tag is is a new a new thing that's that's um, um, that what we were striving for with uh, w, with with Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 is is uh, uh, WCAG requirements, which is it's the um, WCAG is the the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and A tag is is part of the same uh, suite of of guidelines, but they're looking for how to go off and create a uh, create an authoring interface that allows people to it encourages people to create accessible content. So making the, the tool itself a, um, a a better tool for for authoring accessible content. And Drupal is, is responsible for both um, creating content as well as as displaying that content. So it's really both an, an authoring tool and a presentation tool. Um, but but we've begun to go uh, to to be to incorporate elements of, of a tag, which is a new um, candidate. It's, it's just at the candidate release phase of the World Wide Web Consortium. Um, but what this uh, allows uh, allows us to do is, is is really begin to to engage with with the the best practices of, of the the web accessibility community uh, globally and trying and look at um, at implementing things that, that make it easier for for authors to create that accessible content. Um, so one of the things that we've done is is just um, as I said, go off and make sure that the administration interface is accessible. We've always, in, in Drupal 7 and 8, tried to to make sure that that the that a blind user or somebody who has uses assistive technology um, can both install a uh, a Drupal site, uh, be able to do the administration of the Drupal site, edit the content around the Drupal site, and also you know obviously read the the uh, the content of the Drupal site as well. Um, so it's it's really looking at the whole uh, experience of of both being a user and also a developer of the the Drupal platform. Um, one of the nice things that we've we've added in for, for a tag is is requiring alt text. So um, we want to to try and, and encourage best practices wherever possible. And and one of the things we noticed after Drupal 7 was uh, Drupal 7's release was that the, the most common accessibility errors that we ran into when people were launching a, a new website was that they forgot to use the alt text when they were uploading images. And so there's a few places that'll talk about that that where where we've we've in, included uh, requirements for alt text. Uh, and that that uh, that helps with with getting this this uh, uh, with moving towards towards a tag compliance. Um, we've also added help documentation in line. Um, there are again times where if you knew what to do, you were able to go off and create something. That, and, and an author was able to go off and create more accessible content. But if you didn't have a an idea of what the content was capable of, um, then it was really difficult, to, or, or what the tool could do, it was difficult for authors to know where to begin and how to start creating that, uh, to, to adopt those accessibility best practices. So by by trying to change the documentation, we're making it easier for, for your editors to go off and create uh, better content. Um, next slide. So uh, I mentioned HTML5 uh, a, 
a bit earlier, but but it's really about trying to build in more semantics, to build in more meaning. So there's there's things that we were able to go off and and, and bake into uh, to Drupal uh, Drupal 8, like the uh, the phone number field and email and URL and search and number and color. There's there's a number of of, uh, of HTML tags or tags that we can now use in the the uh, um, when we're, we're building websites, and, and that, that is part of the the, uh, um, the API. Um, another big change that we, we made was was switching from uh, field sets to details. Um, in in every previous version of, of Drupal, there was a um, collapsible elements were done through field sets, which which used to be an all right way to go off and, and to to manage. Um, Segmenting a group of content that you want to be able to to you know, hide to minimize the amount of content on the screen. Um, unfortunately, um, nested field sets don't work particularly well uh, for assistive technology. So um, it was a, a real barrier for trying to to use field sets properly in uh, in Drupal 7. Um, but with Drupal 8, we've we've eliminated that problem, and and it's it's easier now for uh, radio buttons and checkboxes and um, and multi-part form elements to be 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 wrapped in a uh, a field set so that there's that semantic relationship built within them. Um, but but again, detail. This is something that that was was um, new to Drupal, but it, but also in many ways new to um, to web development in, in that the details tag is one that that when we first implemented it, implemented it wasn't as well supported because HTML is is uh, is still an evolving um, set of, of, of attributes. Um, the, uh, the the final element I wanted to talk about under HTML was the uh, the required element. So um, we can now uh, semantically go off and, and in the HTML explain when when an input form is required. Um, this is it's really good for uh, for accessibility, particularly for um, users that might have uh, JavaScript disabled. So, uh, making sure that there's a, a a way that universally without JavaScript you can um, I identify to a browser which are the elements that need to be be filled in. Um, now, the we're going to be looking at at at, at at that uh, going forward, because there's a there's an outstanding issue to to try and and take that um, that default HTML output and actually wrap the the JavaScript around that or wrap wrap JavaScript around that so that you can um, have a, a nicer user interface that that pr provides more uh, more usable information and, and more more accessibly for users that have JavaScript enabled. But but that's just uh, the the beginning point of that. Um, we haven't yet gone gone and and, and we're able to bring we're, we're not able to yet to find a solution that works for uh, Drupal 8 just yet to to wrap the the HTML5 required elements. Um, next slide, please. So. Area is uh, this accessible, rich internet applications, and we've we've added a few. Uh, there's a few of them actually that are already in Drupal 7. Uh, when you're in doing the initial installation, um, areas is being used to uh, to announce when there are your progress as you're as you're doing the announcement. So if you wanted to to hear some of the initial implementations of area, um, you could you could hear that in the installation uh, screen to sort of hear the, the progress. In in Drupal 8 we've added it in a lot of other places. And we couldn't add it before because uh, the area standard hadn't been been finalized. It wasn't wasn't uh, ready yet to go off and be baked into Drupal 7, but it's now something that was stable enough that uh, 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 that we were able to go off and bring that in. Um, and uh, so area landmarks are added to uh, both the core themes and core blocks. And area landmarks are basically describing information and the ki kinds of, of content blocks that, um, or types of content that are around. So it could be that there's a uh, you know, search is a, is a type of landmark and the, the footer is a type of uh, landmark. And people are able to, to navigate through uh, using a, um, a screen reader, they can navigate through the website and find out semantically whether you're talking about a menu or whether you're talking about related content or whether that this is the the main uh, the main element itself. Um, so it's really useful to present that information to to screen reader users so that they have that context. Um, we also there was initially a discussion about trying to take out the HTML uh, the header elements because we we also in, in Drupal 7 introduced a number of, of header elements 
to allow uh, people to navigate through the, the website. Um, and unfortunately, at this stage, we're, we're not able to remove those, 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 those header elements. In, in a lot of cases, those header elements are, are still um, being listed, at least in, in Drupal 7, they're listed as element invisible. So you don't actually see them, but they're there. So that there's that semantic information um, presented on the page. Um, but, but screen reader users use the landmarks and the heading structure differently to understand how a page is built and to, 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 to navigate with that. Um, we've also used uh, area described by to provide a uh, description of, of uh, uh, fields. And, and so if there's a, uh, um, if an input form has a description field, uh, that's all semantically linked so that you can, um, that a screen reader user can under, understand that there is a piece of related content and what a description field is tied to semantically, um, also to core blocks. Um, I'll be talking about area live a little bit later, so I won't uh, go into more about that, but it's, it's essentially to, to provide a, a way to interrupt the, the user and, and, and uh, to make sure that, that if there's an urgent issue that needs to get passed to a screen reader user, that they can be, um, that they're, what is being read to them can be interrupted. Um, we've also added uh, area sort, which, which gives you the, the ability to, to convey when, the, um, when you're changing the sort order of a table. And uh, um, if you want to, to, to change the order of things, this gives that information semantically to the browser or to the assistive technology so that they can um, understand what is happening. Next slide, please. So uh, image support is, is, a, is, is one of the, the low hanging fruit of accessibility. Um, all text in some ways are, are so simple and other ways are, are somewhat, well, are quite complicated. Um, it's difficult to, to know how to describe an image and what are the, 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 the best ways depending on the content that is presented with. Uh, because sometimes a picture is something you, you may not want to um, actually just describe the picture. You may want to describe what the picture says in the context of the text that it's embedded in. Um, but we've made a number of, of big improvements to, uh, to the, the, uh, the Drupal interface with, with, with uh, Drupal 8 in that, that all text is required by default on, on content types. So when you're um, setting up a, a new content type or are, are, um, are, are using the default ones that come with Drupal, they come already enabled with, with all text and having that all text be required by default. Now this can be turned off, so you don't have to go off and um, when you're new, creating new content types um, have required text for that, uh, but it's something that that establishes that default. So it's it's you know if you're if you're just implementing the 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 best practice that will include all text. If you for some reason don't want to use that, you can just disable that. It's, but it's that extra step that makes it easier to go off. The, the, the easiest thing to do is to implement something in an accessible manner. Um, with CK Editor, there was also a uh, an alt text uh, that was was we're now requiring alt text by de by default there, and you can disable that, but it's it's a, a bit more complicated to, to disable the the alt text for images in CK Editor, and we did this because we couldn't find that many instances where. Um, where it would be well, there's a there's a way to go off and disable them in the user interface on a, on an individual basis. But by default, it will go off and you'll be forced to over overwrite that as you're you're um, you're adding um, as you're adding the images in CK Editor. By default, the CK Editor um, is going to ask you for an alt text, um, and and it's it's uh, it's something that that for most instances, uh, when people are adding images, uh, unless you're you're really familiar with what are the um, the kinds of, of uh, the, the places where it's inappropriate to use alt text on images, and there are a couple fringe cases where it's not where it's not appropriate to go off and to use alt text, like if it's a um, a, a uh, um, if it's only for 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 decoration, you don't need to to include alt text in that. Um, but it's it's uh, we've tried to to uh, to set it up so that that it's it's um, you're you're having the user is going to be encouraged to go off and to to add alt text in places where it, it where for 80 or 90 percent of the, the time you're going to want to, to have that alt text there. Um, you'll also find in uh, in Drupal 8 that there's uh, longer text for alt text and that it's translatable. Um, there's also now support for the theme uh, image function, so that's uh, that's something also we've we've added in there. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. 
So um, Views is, is now in Drupal 8 and it's amazing. Um, but part of bringing Views into Drupal 8 is is, is meant that the the um, both the user interface and the output have have met a higher requirement, because contributed modules don't need to go off and, and to meet the the goals of, of WCAG 2.0 AA standards. But we're really hoping that everything in in core itself is is meeting those requirements. So um, so we've had to do a lot of work to to add uh, more uh, semantics to to the user interface so that. Uh, blind users can start to use views. This hasn't been a, uh, it's been a, a major sticking point for, for people who are uh, using views in Drupal 7 right now. So they, they, you basically, yeah, it's a real challenge to go off and use it without, uh, without having a, um, uh, without either disabling JavaScript or, um, or doing, or being a sighted person. Um, so, the improvements we've made there, we've we've uh, we've also made uh, improvements on the the output. So the tables in particular have um, have made have, be, have been made considerably more accessible. Um, there's now the ability to go off and to set uh, caption and summary tables. And the summary summary elements there there's there's always changes in code and and what is the best practices and and uh, in. In HTML4, there was a, a slightly different way to go off and to handle uh, summary and caption elements than there is in in, um, in Drupal uh, Drupal well in HTML5 rather because in HTML5 there's a yeah a slightly different best practice so we've we've adopted the the uh, the more recent best practice um, we've also uh, made sure to go off and include uh, header and ID elements to to improve the the semantic information the semantic inf relationship between uh, tables and, and it's not like most of the time the tables in Drupal are all that complicated and, and and some people have argued that they're not actually necessary to to uh, for for uh, for some um, for, for some screen reader users but there have been enough uh, people who who do use them or do um, just to have them consistently implemented by views tables will, will, will definitely make it easier for for machines of all sorts to be able to, to to identify where they are in the context of a uh, of a, of a, uh, a data table um, views is also using a common modal dialog which which helps to again for consistency make sure that that um, that they're using the a default Drupal dialog that is is consistent across the board for for users uh, next slide so uh, forms API is is uh, is great and, and web forms are um, are accessible web forms are, are, are really quite complicated but um, but we've simplified a, a lot of that for for most people and, and part of that's the introduction of area um, we, we made uh, um, we went off and, and had, a, had an issue with with the the asterisks and the star that appears in unrequired text um, and there's sometimes these little things that that depending on who's evaluating the website and how they're what they're they're looking for it has been a, a sticking point on on some um, some some user yes on some evaluations of Drupal 7 so we've, we've been able to um, find what I think is, is a best practice for this in, in terms of, of um, actually uh, displaying the asterisks through CSS and using the asterisks as uh, creating the asterisks as an, an SVG file that that is is displayed in a in a really mobile friendly way so that it expands really nicely and, and blows up you know uh, yeah and, and looks really crisp at a, at a large large size um, but it's it's um, it, it is also very accessible the way that we've we've created it. It's a, it's something that I think is a a, a nice best practice moving forward in, in terms of presenting the uh, presenting just the information that a screen reader user would need to see without providing a a uh, an unrelated you know star uh, like usually when a screen reader was was reading it out they'd say star and uh, when it's the required text and that's that's, that has been understood to be required because that's just a convention that's being adopted, but it's it's much more um, orally understandable right now, where it's just clearly read out as required text. Um, we've also uh, made the configuration of the description text uh, configurable so that you can, through the user interface, uh, sorry, not through the user interface, through you have to um, code it, but uh, but it's possible to to determine whether the you can have the description field appear in different places. Um, 
uh, we've also added title to all form elements so that the um, if that that there's a, a label and a title, uh, or sorry, a label having a title with form elements means that there's go always going to be a label that's associated with that that form element to see that the there's a semantic relationship, and we're not going to be having um, having for input forms that don't have any uh, corresponding title with them to give give context for that field. Um, and again, we're supporting HTML5's required field. Um, and the big change that's, that's actually happened this week is we've um, we've made a, uh, a, a, a one of the epic issue queues is 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 making inline forms uh, inline accessible forms uh, form errors so that when people are are filling in a form, if they receive an error, that we now have a uh, an accessible means to go off and to convey that information back to the user, so that that the uh, by default in Drupal 8, the results are going to be much easier for for everyone to be able to understand where the problem is and how to go off and address that. Um, and there'll be uh, a simple link uh, provided that that draws people down to the, the 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 source of the error and allows them to be able to make that correction. So that's a, a huge a huge issue that that I think is is. Uh, is one that that uh, um, all Drupal 8 sites are going to be benefiting from, and probably one of the um, the bigger accessibility improvements that people will uh, be able to identify, um, even as uh, as sighted people when they're they're navigating through a website. Uh, next slide. So the uh, when you're when you're logging into the the uh, the authenticated side of, of a, a website um, there are a couple things that that were annoying not only for uh, for people with disabilities but but especially with people with disabilities uh, things like auto capitalization and auto correction on usernames and passwords these are, are things that that uh, when you're filling in a, uh, a form with a mobile device it can be really frustrating to see that um, we've also added uh, color and description a better description to the password checker, so that uh, that that is is more semantically meaningful when when people are uh, filling in the form, they can see clearly that they um, they have both a uh, a visual and, and and textual explanation about what the change is. That's that's uh, uh, whether or not their password is good enough or not. Um, and uh, you know, there's certainly other improvements that we've made uh, for the administration side of the website, and the, the toolbars is certainly one that's gone through uh, quite a lot of of uh, reviews and, and Im Im improvements to see that that there's a a, uh, a very modern and very uh, accessible menu built into uh, Drupal 8 to allow people to navigate through their their um, their website in a, in a, a really um, clear and straightforward manner. Uh, next slide. So. Um, in one of the mammoth issues uh, that we dealt, dealt with in Drupal 7 was was dealing with um, CSS display none, and um, there was a decision to go off and to eliminate that or to change the phrasing of, of CSS uh, or in in in, um, in Drupal 7 we created element invisible and uh, element hidden. We we created a, our own sort of nomenclature for. For, for how to go off and, and to, to hide content on um, on websites and and uh, whether it's the, the the heading pages that I mentioned earlier that we wanted to have there for semantic reasons but we didn't want to to have them uh, we wanted to, to hide them for sighted users but not to um, to hide them to screen readers um, or uh, another one is, is, is the, the skip links that the skip links that are built into Drupal 7 we wanted to be able to to have them visible on focus but not see them at other times um, it was something that that we felt it was was a, was a better um, it, was, it was useful to have a pattern built into Drupal 7 that allowed us to um, to, to, to have one standard way to be able to have an accessible way of, of um, hiding, uh, hiding content for, uh, for everyone, for, uh, for uh, screen reader users, and also for, for keyboard only users, to make sure that there was a, a mechanism to do that. Um, in Drupal 8, we've, we've decided, we looked outside of the community, like we've done for a lot of, of the Drupal 8 process, and decided that it was, was better to adopt the, um, the language, the nomenclature that the HTML5 boilerplate did. So in this case, the language is hidden, visually hidden, visually hidden, focus, focusable, and invisible. There's really not much difference between in, uh, hidden and invisible, but um, the 
you're, you're going to find that that uh, uh, that when you're doing your upgrades from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, that there are going to be places where where the the old element and build invisible classes will need to be renamed to be the uh, the new uh, the new format using um, hidden or visually hidden uh, to to uh, to make sure that 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 it's clear when when uh, when when people are, 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 are using the new standard because we're not going to be, the element invisible classes are no longer part of the, of, uh, of the Drupal 8 framework. Um, we've also, in, in, the, um, in the UI, there's, there's the ability to, when you're creating a, a field label formatter, to actually uh, determine whether or not that field label is uh, visually hidden or not. So there's a, there's a, a drop down that allows you to, to specify that. Um, so that that's made, made it a lot more useful for people who are creating uh, content types and and wanting to be able to control how that that information is presented. Next slide. Um, another uh, big change that we've we've added is, is around the the um, uh, JavaScript and and the the tabbing manager is is something that uh, that Wim largely developed and. In this case, it's it's um, it's allowing people to or, or trying to go off and, and and dealing with more complicated user interfaces, and with more um, more complicated user interfaces, you need to be able to to control the tabbing structure in a, in a way that 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 allows um, allows it to to function like um, in, in I guess in, in an isolated piece, like in, in terms of of. Um, the the uh, if you if you have a list of links that pops up, you may want to be able to to tab through that list of links and then go up to the the top of that set of links and cycle through that um, until that that set of links is released. And uh, I provided some code to go off and, and to uh, to address this. Um, and there's there's already uh, there's also examples in the um, in the uh, in Drupal 8 uh, about how to how to go off and to, to manage the uh, the tabbing manager. Um, so and this is again this, this is a, a JavaScript function that 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 allows you to uh, to control the the uh, uh, the function for for uh, for keyboard only users. Um, so uh, next slide, please. Um, I should also just say that, that just in case people don't know, um, people uh, th there's a number of people who use keyboards to navigate. Um, there's uh, certainly people who might have carpal tunnel syndrome or might have uh, something like cerebral palsy who are not able to, to navigate through a website using a mouse. Uh, but certainly uh, people who are blind as well are, are keyboard only users. Um, there's, there's people who have much more limited uh, movement who, who also navigate by essentially tabbing through a list of, of links and, and navigating by jumping between links on the page. And, and that's what I was referring to earlier on the, on the previous slide about tabbing through the interface. Um, the, the next JavaScript tool that we've we've added is is uh, Drupal Announce, and this is is using the Area Live um, functionality to to be able to communicate directly to the screen reader and to give them information about what is um, important information that might need to get passed along. Um, so uh, this is a uh, there's an example of this, um, but we're really hoping that when there's there's interruptions or, or announcements that are are being made to uh, a sighted user, or when there's content that changes on the screen, that this content can get reported back to the um, to the screen reader to let them know that there is new or different content on the web page. Um, it's it's uh, something that that when we're 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 creating a um, creating information on uh, a website, so many of the the web pages are now so dynamic that that. Uh, the content is being changed as we navigate through it, and providing a means to ex to to explain to a screen reader that that there is a change, and they might need to go off and and, and review the content on the page because of the of, a, of an update. is It's really quite important to have that uh, that context and give that to them. Um, and again, there's in the, in the middle of that slide, I've, I've provided the the. Uh, um, an, ex an example of how to go off and to use the uh, the Drupal announce um, function, and, and again, Drupal is a there's been a real effort to try and make uh, Drupal multilingual, and and so uh, in this case, uh, in Drupal 8 is definitely the most uh, multilingual version of Drupal uh, Drupal ever. Uh, but the example we've used here includes uh, translation as well. Um, now. 
I didn't actually include a slide on this, but since I'm, I'm talking a little bit about, about translation, it's, it's useful to, to remember that there are accessibility implications for multilingual sites and multilingual content. Um, if you are using different, a different language within the context of a, um, of a page, the, the, the screen reader needs to be alerted about that. And there's, um, there's easy ways to go off into either th within a span tag or within um, at the, the header of the page to go off and identify um, what is the language that's, that's being used. Uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's so important because the screen readers just try to read the content out using the libraries that they have available and they could go off and if you if you gave it gave them the instruction that the text was in a different language it would try to to read it in that other language um, but that's that's a fairly short description of that if we could go to the next slide so uh, another neat initiative in in Drupal 8 is the uh, the proudly built elsewhere and Drupal's really worked to try and, and, and play well with others and, and to collaborate and, and really engage with, with other open source communities to try and, and build um, the, best, the best tools out there. And so um, you'll, you'll hear more in Drupal 8 about the use of Twig and the use of Symfony. Um, and those are, are elements that, that, um, that don't really have an accessibility component to them because they're, they're Deeper than that, they're you know the structure of the HTML, not the HTML. Or see, it's, it's it's how the HTML is created as opposed to the HTML itself, um, or how the, the page content is created. Um, but it's it's uh, where where there are elements where 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 the Drupal community has worked worked hard. And I had mentioned jQuery UI before. Um, CK Editor is another in interesting one. There was a a lot of, of discussion um, early on about uh, which. Which WYSIWYG was was uh, was Drupal 8 going to use, and how are we going to ship with the WYSIWYG uh, to be able to take advantage of all of the um, the the possibilities if you're able to to have to control the WYSIWYG within that interface and and make sure that the information is, is properly synced up. It it just makes the user experience so much more uh, professional. Um, but but we we really worked with the the CK editor community to push their accessibility and to improve it, but also to to make sure that it it, it worked well within the Drupal context. And, and uh, CK, the CK editor community has worked uh, long on improving their their um, their accessibility, and they've done a great job of it. But it's it's something that does require um, uh, uh, perpetual vigilance because because the 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 whole environment is changing all the time. You have uh, the, the the browsers are, are being updated. User expectations are, are changing. The uh, the markup is is changing as well. Um, so many things are being being reworked. Um, as as we go, and, and it's it's uh, it's really important to be working with a large uh, a large community to try and make sure that that the tools we use are following with the best pa best practices out there. Um, so again, we mentioned HTML5 boilerplate, and and uh, you know trying to go off and, and to pick from those those best best use cases. Um, I mentioned CSS lint in here as well. CSS lint isn't um, there are are instructions being included in Drupal 8 to use CSS lint, um, but it's it's a uh, it's not like that library is being included. In uh, in core itself, but it's it's part of the development process uh, that we're using now to try and make sure that the CSS in core is really shipped as cleanly as possible. Um, and there's now tools in CSS lint, thanks to, to working with the Drupal community, that that are looking to see that the the uh, focus and uh, and hover effects for CSS are are mirrored to to alert developers when there's a pro when 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 the the uh, the user is only looking, or it doesn't include the the, uh, the 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 pairing the hover and focus elements for CSS. Next slide. So uh, there's a lot better markup in uh, in Drupal 8. We've we've uh, had a, a team of people who've been looking at at cleaning up and and uh, eliminating divs and making sure that it's it's a, a much a uh, nicer uh, interface to be able to to, to theme and to, to control, um, but part of that that cleaner markup is that we have more meaningful HTML, and so it's it's easier for um, screen readers to be able to navigate through pagination, through breadcrumbs. Uh, there have been improvements.
links to the, the book module and to the forums. Um, there's also been um, improvements in taxonomies and, and, and also sort of clean, clean out cruft like empty headings and, and labels that were uh, inappropriately labeled. And, and so that was things that we've done to clean that up. Uh, next slide. Um, you also notice in Bartik that we that there's underlines in the content of the links in the content itself, um, and it's really a best practice that we're trying to go off into to emphasize and reinforce is to, to make sure that 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 the there are uh, underlines and links to make sure that that, that common um, commonly understood convention um, is is used by default in in themes so that that we can um, we can move forward and, and sort of have that as a as a best practice moving ahead when people are thinking about designing their own themes. Um, so do try and keep in those those underlined links. Um, and we, the way we've done that does make it look a little bit better and a, a little bit more readable. Uh, than than the, the default uh, the default ones that, that are presented with the browser. Next slide. So uh, color contrast is one that that uh, has has been an, an interesting one because it's often overlooked. Um, and with so much of our, our population uh, aging with the the baby boomers, it's a it's a, a bigger issue to try and, and make sure that, that that people with low vision or people with um, different kinds of vision are able to go off and, and to see the the pages as well as possible. So um, there have been places where we've we've noticed uh, improvements that can be made with with gradients and and our, our, our Watching how, how gradients are, uh, are are calculated or are, are evaluated when we're we're looking at the creation of core, uh, we've also made improvements to error messages and to just even the, the gray text to make sure that 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 uh, that content is is something that's going to be available. Um, we also changed. You'll notice that Bartik has a, a little bit of a different blue than it does in in Drupal 8 and Drupal 7. And again, we, we wanted to make sure that that not only could you uh, could somebody with low vision see this fairly well, but that it would be easier when we're out using our iPhones or our, our tablets out in, in the sun um, and, and needing to make small changes or whatnot to a website that we can we can do that because we have the ability we have the, the contrast to be able to see not just in a dark room with our, our bright uh, bright screens but in in a real life environment uh, outdoors in the sunshine um, and that color contrast is, is becoming an important part uh, particularly as Drupal 8 has has a mobile friendly focus and, and I'm wanting to make sure that accessibility is part of that uh, next slide. So this is where I mentioned the, uh, the uh, keyboard only focus and CSS lint um, and it is really important to, to keep an eye on, on the focus of the keyboard. So many times when people are doing the CSS, they forget about the focus element and only look at hover. Um, whenever you have uh, a hover effect defined, there should be a corresponding focus event so that a keyboard only user has um, as good or better ability to go off and to see where they are on the page because because really the focus element and the outline are really the only ways to go off and make sure that that you have uh, that a screen that I sorry that a keyboard only user who's sighted knows where they are on the page um, and it, when you're you're testing your modules and themes it's useful to try and, and tab through the interface so just you know hit the tab key watch where the focus goes and and, and sort of see how how so many people are, are navigating uh, your website without the use of a mouse. Next slide. So um, there's Drupal 8 isn't finished yet. Um, we all want to be to have it out the door and and, and uh, uh, get running, uh, but it's not uh, it's not done. And there's a lot of issues that we know about that are are being pushed back to uh, to Drupal 8.1 because we now have a, a new release cycle, so that there will be uh, point releases of Drupal, um, or even to Drupal 9 because they're just large enough issues that in order to tackle them, we don't think that we can tackle them without uh, within the the uh, 8.1, 8.2 release cycle for for Drupal. Um, but there's still things that can get into the the uh, the 8.0 release. Um, and there's a, a list of issues. A lot of them need review. A lot of them need the ability to to uh, to test and evaluate. Um, and you don't have to be an expert in order to do this. There's lots of ways for people who are uh, 
we have some experience to get involved and, and to, to look at that. So I've, I've included the um, the, the uh, URL to get to probably the, the best the best source of, of accessibility issues in, in Drupal 8, and it's uh, goo.gl slash one lowercase b one lowercase j uppercase m lowercase b. Um, so do take a look at that. Um, the it's also um, there's if you run into issues, uh, it's important to post those 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 issues or concerns to the issue queue. That's the only way that that, that issues get addressed in the the community, and and that goes for for modules and themes as well. And as modules are being rewritten for for Drupal 8, this is a great time for people who are are using Drupal 7 to look ahead to say, well, this didn't quite work in in Drupal 7. We weren't able to go off and address the accessibility issues. Let's try and do this when we're rebuilding it for Drupal 8, and and look at how we can go off and and leverage what's in core to go off and to make it easier for everyone to be able to access it. Um, there's also um, in the last uh, the last year or two. Being some uh, some really interesting tools that have come out that are um, either open source or open source friendly that that uh, can be very very useful to, to test and evaluate your module or theme or or to to, to look at, at Drupal core itself. Um, the one that's that's best known in the community is Quail, and um, it's a it's a great library that's got a lot of, of uh, advantages uh, to it, um, but the the two that have that have come out recently um, is uh, Tenon, uh, which Carl Groves is behind, and again that's a JavaScript testing language or a library, but it's it's a it's a it's a service. So in that case, you have to actually pay or sign up to go off and to get the results of that. Um, and uh, there's a program, uh, sorry, there's an organization called DQ that has, has created one called uh, Axe Core that they've they've only in the last couple of weeks released. And, and it'd be interesting to see um, people try and evaluate and, and to, to, to test with these these open source, uh, well, uh, certainly the Axe Core and QuailJS are open source libraries, but to, to work with those. Um, but yeah, reviewing core patches and to to participate in in the the community online is, is really quite useful. Um, there's also going to be a number of opportunities to to learn or to read about uh, uh, web accessibility and to to learn to to learn about ways to go off and implement Drupal sites as 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 well as you can. Um, there's a, a number of Drupal of sorry accessibility camps that are, are uh, that happen across uh, North America and, and Asia as well. Um, that are worthwhile looking at. There should be a few in the fall, uh, in probably in, in uh, Boston and DC and Toronto and uh, Los Angeles. So they happen in a few different places, um, and uh, it's a you know, meeting with people with disabilities and talking with others and uh, engaging with with the uh, uh, accessibility community online is a really great way to to help keep yourself up to up to date. Um, there's so much information which has been posted about web accessibility over the last 15 years. It's it's uh, it's difficult to, to keep up to date because because so many times when you've just you're dealing with a Google search, you get a result back which isn't necessarily as current as you need it to be in order to uh, to keep up with with the uh, uh, the best practices and uh, for for uh, for this day and age. Um, and next slide. So uh, this is our question and answer slide. So if uh, there's an opportunity for people to ask questions earlier, and at this point nobody has has, uh, has asked a question in the window, but Lauren, you had a, did you have a question for me? Uh, yeah, I did. Just one second. No problem. It would be handy if you had uh, the, the, mo the use of the monitor you were expecting to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, I appreciate your patience with all of that. Um, so I did have a really quick question. Um, who other than blind users will uh, benefit from these changes? There are so many people who have uh, accessibility issues um, either either temporarily or uh, permanently that, that will benefit from, from these changes. Um, the, the blind community is really a, a minuscule portion of the, the, uh, um, the population. Um, there are um, 
yeah, there, there's 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 people who have low vision, whether it's seniors, there's uh, just even looking at at the percentage of the male population um, at the, that is colorblind. I think it's about seven percent of the male population has some form of colorblindness. Um, then there's the rest of us which just care less about color, um, but uh, but the percentage of, of color blindness is, is uh, within men is 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 significant. Um, you also have, have people who are temporarily blind, um, whether it's be, or te sorry not temporarily yeah temporarily blind, uh, or have uh, there's people who've, who've lost uh, some of their vision temporarily based on um, medications that they're taking or uh, based on an accident they might have had. Uh, or even if you're if you're dealing with with um, uh, having uh, cataracts removed or something like that 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 you need to uh, to deal with or your, your your glasses get broken and you're you're you know, without without your glasses for a period of time um, there's a, you know, a lot of the improvements that we're making in here make it easier for for everyone to be able to adjust their uh, adjust the web to to what their needs are at the moment and. Uh, um, so, so it's it's at least uh, 15 to 20 percent of the population that that is is uh, uh, is benefiting from uh, some of these improvements um, because it's because of the range of, of issues that we've been tackling with this. Definitely, um, you mentioned uh, ATAG, but is that a requirement for this? A tag is is uh, is not a requirement. It's, it's something that we've we've uh, um, wanted to try and, and use in order to help authors create better content and, and more accessible content. Um, but that isn't something that we've uh, that the Drupal community has uh, endorsed. And partly it's is that the that it's it's new and and fresh enough that that the standards um, haven't quite. Um, haven't quite been been adopted, and, and and there aren't good models to go off and to to implement this just yet. Um, so we need to have have a few more examples in the community of, of how to uh, to engage with with these guidelines. Um, it's it's something that I expect will be a bigger part of of the uh, the experience for for Drupal 9, um, particularly as as more agencies begin to to look for this and and uh, and certainly governments and uh, universities have 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 led the efforts for for adoption of of access, uh, accessible standards, and um, I'm assuming that this will happen in the next. Uh, in the next year or two, there'll be be a greater a greater institutional push for 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 these offering tools to to uh, to be built in a way that it encourages accessible content to be written. Okay. It looks like we do have a couple questions. Um, I'll just start with this one. Um, in Drupal 7, I ran into accessibility issues with the file attachment ta uh, tables, icon, alt text, sticky header, etc. Will that be addressed in uh, Drupal 8? We have made improvements to the file handling of, uh, of Drupal 7, um, and that's this. It hasn't been completely resolved, um, but it will certainly um, you'll be alerted when that file is is uh, uh, is, is uploaded to the, to the page, and, and and absolutely that was a, a problem that was uh, we weren't able to to address in, in Drupal 7, and um, and it's again one of these these issues where where as you upload an attachment to to a web page that that uh, the content uh, of the the content of the web page changed, and in Drupal 7 we didn't have a way to announce to the user that there was a change to the page. Uh, thankfully, with Drupal Announce, we now have a mechanism to go off and to uh, to provide that that uh, additional context, and uh, we have a, a consistent standard that that uh, that we can use to to convey that change of information, whether a file is added or removed, uh, and, and to make sure that that's, that's uh, you know, clearly announced to screen readers. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned color contrast as a new feature that comes with Drupal 8. Is that a part of the themes that come by default, or do you need to add them individually? The, the color contrast is, is mostly in how Bartik and 7 are structured. So it's mostly the theme layer, um, but, but the one of the the great things about about Drupal is is that people look at core and they look at what is being done at core and they when they're building their own themes and modules um, tend to emulate what was done in core. Um, so if we've built it in with 
with a slightly different change of, of the CSS, and we've we've incorporated a um, uh, like the, uh, the the color of the red that we've implemented uh, in in uh, um, for for the asterisks, for example, which is actually not done with the it was well, is managed in Bartik, but also in in, in core as well. Um, but but those are things that are. are um, are defined and, and are, have sufficient contrast so that if somebody's looking at your website, um, they're they're not unless somebody says overridden that in the theme. Um, there there are things that are going to come out and and, and, and benefit people, but it, it isn't. Um, yeah, there's 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 always so much that we can do to 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 influence the the core themes, uh, or sorry, the the non-core themes, the contributed themes, to adopt the best practices and and. Uh, and part of it is, is, is setting the example, and part of that is, is uh, making sure that there's there's clear documentation about what are the best practices and how to evaluate uh, your gradients and and the um, your your uh, CSS to make sure that the uh, CSS and images actually to make sure that the uh, that the proper contrast is there. Okay. Um, I want to be mindful of time, so I'm going to ask you one last question really quick. Uh, there were a couple of people requesting actual. Uh, presentations of what the features will look like. And um, while Mike and I had discussed that this is just going to be a little bit more uh, talking about what to look forward to, that hopefully uh, when Drupal 8 is released, we can uh, do a demonstration uh, and show showcase those features. Um, uh Definitely, you know, interested in showcasing individual features and, and providing, um, assuming that I've got uh, we've got the, the 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 technology issues worked out. Um, but it's also something where you don't have to wait till Drupal 8 is released. Um, there's a, a, fun, a functioning version of Drupal that you can you can run right now um, from uh, of, of Drupal 8 core, and you can evaluate it with a number of other modules as well. The um, the, the the web page simply test.me is is a really terrific way to go off and to uh, both evaluate where core is at now and how things work and function now for uh, sighted users and for screen reader users, and and this is being functioning and stable for a couple of years now. Um, it's, it's a really valuable resource for testing and evaluating, but it also allows you to test patches. So um, often um, when I'm trying to go off and, and test a patch, I don't even install it on my own local environment most of the time. Most of the time I simply use simply test.me to evaluate how a, uh, a patch or a module will work with core. And I have a, you know, um, if you're an anonymous user, you have half an hour to go off and to, to test it and, and to evaluate different components of it. So I really encourage people to, to look at it themselves and, and learn how to, uh, to test what, what works and doesn't work with, uh, for, for their, their focus groups or for themselves uh, with, with, the, uh, with Drupal 8 core. That's a really great tip. Um... And uh, with that, we're at the top of the hour. So I just want to thank you, Mike, again for your um, your knowledge. It, clearly, you are uh, very well versed in this subject, and um, I think this is a really fantastic way to make sure that um, we continue to be inclusive of everyone in our uh, community and in our work. So uh, with that I will say thank you. And um, just one last request: if you have a couple minutes, uh, please take the survey at the end of the webcast. Mike has a couple questions.